Hey guys, we're talking about the U.S. deficit and the U.S. debt. Now, I hope guys that you get a lot out of this. I know my visuals are a little bit cheap, but guys, I'm focused on first year economic students. So I'm going to put in a few extra things that hopefully will help you out in your first year economics class. Well, let's start off with what is a deficit. And in this video, guys, we're focused on the United States. That's going to be our domestic country. So we're talking about the U.S. government deficit. What is a government deficit? And specifically, we're going to be talking about the U.S. government deficit. A deficit, quite simply, is a shortfall in your budget. Now, I'm going to explain that further. Don't worry. But what I mean by that, guys, is we've got a budget. And like all budgets, we've got inflows. And the main inflow to the government is, of course, taxes, right? So that's the inflow of money. So this money is flowing in, all right? And we've got outflows, okay? Expenditures, you might say. I like the word outflows, okay? Two major types of outflows, government purchases. What are those? That's the buying of goods and services. It's the buying of this whiteboard because I'm in a government building right now. So this whiteboard was bought by the government, but it's also the payment of my salary because I'm providing a service as a teacher. So we've got government purchases, buying of goods and services, and then we've got transfer payments, okay? When we just transfer money from taxpayers to recipients, that could be in the form of social security or unemployment compensation or many other transfers that we have there where we just transfer money. I like the term transfer payments. A lot of people just call these government transfers, same thing. So those are our two major types of obligations that we have. We have passed legislation. It's so important that students understand this is legislation that has been passed. This is now law that we have to kind of spend this money right here, okay? And what is the money that's coming in? Taxes. Now, a deficit is when there's a shortfall, when your tax revenue is less than your obligations, okay? And if we have that, the U.S. Treasury Department, part of the executive branch of the United States, they are obligated to go borrow money to finance that deficit. Because like I said, these are obligations. We have to pay this in the present. It has been legislated. Certainly, we can change these things in the future, and we can change that in the future, okay? So we can change the amount of tax revenues by passing new legislation or government purchases or transfer payments. We can change all of those things through legislation. We can change them in the future. But what I want you to focus on is the deficit is a present thing, okay? That we have passed a budget. It's already happened. We've passed a budget and we're running a deficit. Our tax revenues are not enough for our obligations. So the Treasury Department has to finance that deficit. And what does it mean to finance something? It means to get funding, basically to get money, right? They have to finance that deficit. And in an economics class, where do you go? What's the language we use for where you go when you need to finance something, you go to the financial market. So we go to the financial markets and the government is going to borrow in those financial markets, which by the way, is going to drive interest rates up. So when they go borrow money, when the government enters those financial markets to borrow this money, that drives the price of money up because they're basically demanding money, which we call demanding loanable funds, which guys, has detrimental effects on business investment because business investment is sensitive to the interest rate. And when those interest rates go up, businesses will do less investment, okay? So again, the deficit, a shortfall in the budget. When you have more spending obligations, more outlays legislated, then you have tax revenues coming in. That's the deficit, the shortfall. We have to finance it. We have to go get money for this hole in our budget. We head to the financial markets and we borrow. We issue things like treasury bonds, okay, in those financial markets, which are just basically IOUs. Now, deficits and debt. Deficits is a flow, okay? That's a generic term, okay? And then we also have stock. Here's something that a lot of students kind of understand is there's the amount of carbon we are emitting every single year. That is the flow of carbon into the atmosphere. But there's also a stock of carbon already in the atmosphere. That's how much we already have out there. That deficit, that amount, or not sorry, that, um, that flow, that amount of carbon we're emitting every single year is adding to that stock of carbon that's in the atmosphere. Same thing here, right? Stocks and flows. So the deficit is a flow, right? It's adding to our debt. The debt is a stock, okay? Now I've got a bathtub. That's what this is supposed to be. So I've got the water coming out of the faucet. Again, that's the flow. That's the deficit. And by the way, in 2022, our deficit was $1.5 trillion. And I've got worse news, guys. That deficit is actually going to be bigger in 2023, all right? So these are big deficits for an economy that has a pretty doggone low unemployment rate right now. But anyhow, 
So we've got 1.4 as our deficit. Our U.S. debt in total is about $33 trillion, $33 trillion. Now, we can break that up into a few different buckets, okay? Now, the major two divisions, I have three, but I'm going to say the major two divisions is what we call intergovernment debt, okay? That is debt the U.S. government owes to itself. That's kind of like me maybe borrowing from my IRA or my 401k. Now, IRAs and 401ks are retirement accounts. It's not that important for this video, but that's me borrowing from my own accounts from, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna borrow from my retirement savings, okay? Now, is it really debt? I owe it to myself. And there's arguments of whether or not we should really focus on that debt. But, hey guys, if I'm borrowing from my retirement account, it's gonna maybe make things worse for me in the future, right? Because I need that money in the future. So some people say, yes, count that intergovernment debt when the government borrows from itself. Other people say, no, 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 that's weird to count debt you owe to yourself. That's not really debt. So there's different arguments on that. That's the intergovernment debt. Then you have the public debt, which is about $26 trillion. That's a lot, guys. And by the way, this $26 trillion we have about 1.2 of that owned by the Chinese, another one something trillion of that owned by the Japanese, and then a bunch of other countries own a lot of that debt. But guys, the majority of that debt is actually not owned by other countries. It's not uh, debt owed to foreigners, okay? About only six trillion, and that's actually not what that six is. So about this 26 trillion, about six trillion of it is owned by, uh, by foreigners, okay? So a lot of that is owned to banks and businesses and individuals and pension funds here, right here in the United States, which is still important because those people very much want to get paid. All right. So again, 26 trillion from here to here, guys, is what we call our public debt. This six trillion that I have right there, that's how much the Federal Reserve Bank owns. Okay. The Federal Reserve Bank owns about 6 trillion of that 26 trillion. Now, when this Federal Reserve Bank owns debt, we still call that part of our public debt. So again, public debt, intergovernment debt, debt owed to other government agencies, mainly the social security system, okay? Right there, that is our public debt, which includes debt owed to foreigners, debt owed to businesses, uh, banks, individuals, pension funds, and of course, yes, the Federal Reserve. So again, the deficit, that's the amount our budget has a shortfall in a given year. These numbers right here, 4.9 trillion in taxes, that was 2022. 6.3 trillion dollars in expenditures, guys. Again, 2022, our deficit 20, 2022, 1.4 trillion. That was our shortfall. We had to go to the financial markets and we had to borrow money for that deficit because we had to make good on these obligations which are legislated, okay? They are in law, we have to make good. It's been passed by our Congress, often signed by our president, pretty much always signed by our president right there. And so we have to make good on those. Treasury Department goes, borrows that money to make good. But of course, that adds to our debt. Hope that makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.